Not only has the property known as 14 Parsons Lane been allowed to turn into a verminous slum, but it is owned by none other than one Alicia Goodall. Who, sir, may your readers ask, is Alicia Goodall? That, sir, is the maiden name of the wife of the chairman of our county council. I am Sir you. Anything wrong? You can't say that. Why can't I? It's true. But, Father, the wife of the chairman is Mrs. Stanton. She's the kindest person. She's a slum landlord. Or rather, he is. He's hiding behind her petticoats, and I mean to flush him out. She'll be disgraced. She does so much good in the town. And it's the do-gooders who are turning what once may have been a green and pleasant land into one great big tenement, urban and rural. A thieves' paradise, because they prefer not to look at what's ugly and corrupt. No, you think with your affections, Edith, like your mother. England is being sold to the highest bidder, and you really couldn't care. Could you, my child? I'm not a child. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm afraid you have the wrong number. Who was that? I don't know. Some woman. Are you quite sure it wasn't some man? What? You're a poor liar, too, like your mother, Edith. Listen to me. When a daughter of mine chooses to make a fool of herself... I don't know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, but I do. Now, you know nothing goes on in this town without my knowledge. There's a man called Vance. A commercial traveller. Uh, father, the post. Post's been and gone. Public meeting. Sobriety is next to godliness. The Reverend Price Jones will speak on the evils of drink and urge his listeners to heed the teachings of Mohammed. Mohammed, eh? The devil he will. Not in this corner of England. My coat. Father. Father. Now type that letter as I dictated it. Mohammed, eh? We'll see about that. This is 115. I want the hotel, please. Hello? May I speak to Mr. Vance? My friends, I see a question trembling on your lips. Who, you are saying, is this man? My friend is a follower of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad, the first religious leader to forbid the consumption of alcoholic beverages. And what, you are asking, has he to do with this Christian assembly? Damn fools and damn foreigners! Shame on us! That we have not taken the lesson of Mohammed and the Americans to art. In every home in England where there is drink, I tell you there is misery! Bordadash! Poverty! Ragged children! Women whose husbands are no longer men but drunken animals! How many broken homes, how many foul crimes are caused by the innocent glass of wine? The harmless tot of spirits, the convivial pint of ale. I tell you... I've never heard such damn nonsense in all my life. Sir, you're a fool. My friends, let us not condemn that misguided man. He has been led grievously into the ways of the sinner. Rather, let us pray that he shall one day be led into the meadows of salvation and not the hop fields of the damned. Let us pray for a moment in silence. Good day to you, sir. Damn vandals. I beg your pardon? Look at that. Look down there. There's no stream anymore. It's a rubbish tip. Tin cans, bottles, bits of an old perambulator. My God, there's even a dead cat. Yes, but uh, the cat could have fallen in. 
I've written to the county council. Newspapers even had my own pamphlets printed. No damn use. The whole country's turning into a slum and nobody lifts a finger. Who are you? One of those total abstainers. No, I'm a Roman Catholic. Oh, yes. Can't say I've got very much time for papers either. Always on their knees praying for the conversion of England, you'll find it cheap. Fond of a drink, though, I've heard it so. Have I seen you before? I doubt it. I'm staying down here for the weekend with a friend. What, at the hotel? Yes. I can tell you a thing or two about that place. My name's Ragley. Come along. I'll show you around the village. Oh. I used to be very proud of it once. Now, everywhere you look, there's thievery, venality, and couldn't care less. Never mind. Shut one eye and you won't notice. Is your friend uh, with you? No, he stayed behind at the hotel. He's reading. You have a room for me, I think. Name, sir. Jeffries. Oh, Jeffries. Yes, I have a nice front double for you and madam. Will you please to sign? We should like some tea immediately. Oh, I'm afraid just at the moment, sir, the tea room is being redecorated. But if you would care to have it in your room. We would prefer it there. Splendid. Number 35. My dear. Tea will be sent up directly. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jeffries, there's rather a difference in their ages. Yes, are, are the decorators finished in the commercial room yet? Well, they said about half an hour. Yeah, we'll tell them not a minute longer. You might say, please. I've got to keep herself, and I've got to keep her. You can't get blood out of a stone. It's not something she believes in. I cannot borrow money from my father. What's so difficult about it? Well, can't you just ask him? Say you uh, want to buy some clothes, or ask him for an allowance. Well, you earn it, for God's sake. Father is feudal. He doesn't think that women are entitled to any money. He thinks they should be grateful for their board and lodging and ask for nothing else. Well, if I'd been you, I'd have walked out on him years ago. I would have done if anybody had asked me. Well, this is getting us nowhere. You better go. I can hear Father coming. Now, just take a look at these files. That'll show you what I'm up against. What are you doing in here, Edith? I was returning one of your books. Well, in its proper place, I hope. My daughter, Father... Uh, Brown. How do you do? How do you do? Excuse me. Yes. Well, do sit down, Father, and make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll just give you a random selection. Land speculation. Jobbery by a county councillor. Sir Basil Snellford that puts himself above the law because he's a Tory and a magistrate. Rotten meat on sale to the public. And the so-called health inspector turns a blind eye. Well, I assume put a stop to that. I say you do keep busy, Mr. Rackley. Well, somebody has to. They call me a crank, you know. Really? <laughs> yes, because I keep them honest. Oh. And if the newspapers won't print my letters, I print them myself. Oh. Yes! I have pamphlets made. Oh, see? 
Hand them up myself. Good heavens. Yes, I can tell you, sir. I haven't been sued yet because I know my stuff. Do my homework. Would you care for a drink? Well, now, I... don't let me down. Oh, oh well, a glass of sherry. No, never touch it myself. Sherry, that is. I always have cherry brandy. It's the only English drink left in England. I can tell you something, Father. There's a swindle going on in every inn in this country. A swindle? Yes, that would have raised a revolution elsewhere. Now you wait till I print that. Then we'll... Yes, of course. It is. It is. Yes, Father. You've had a visitor. Have I? That's no use lying, my child. You're too old for that. And you're too old to have hole in the corner affairs with the ruffians. You seem to know all about him. I know his name, and I know who employs him. I'm in the course of finding out the rest, where he lives, if he's married. You have no right. And what the attraction is for him in this house. Women who are no longer in the first bloom of youth see what they want to see. He's not to come here again, do you understand? Yes. I'll talk to you when my visitor leaves. Sorry, Father. Sherry, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, thank you. Your good health, sir. <laughs> Though I doubt whether you'll keep it for long drinking that stuff. All right, young fella. Don't worry. <laughs> I can manage. Oh, Flambeau. Well, did you enjoy your walk? Very much indeed. Uh, what about your reading? It is absorbing. Oh, shall we have a drink? Yes, why not? Uh, oh, dear, look at this. Yes. <laughs> Watch out. See, the decorators have been in. The question is, has it been done up, done down, or done in? Oh, dear, oh dear. I wonder if we shall be served by Oriental gentlemen in oh, turbans. My. If you please. Hello? No one. Well, never mind. If we wait a bit, Flombo, somebody will come. What is it? Hmm. Murder. What? The thought crossed my mind how easy it would be to commit a murder in this room. Would it? Hmm. Oh, I see what you mean. With all these daggers. Yes, I suppose it would. But you could kill someone just as easily in a, a, an ordinary kitchen with a carving knife or a poker. Yes, but I wasn't thinking of the daggers. No? Well, I dare say. One could commit a murder anywhere. For instance, I could murder you at this minute far more easily than I can get a drink at this bar. Murder is always easy, Flambeau. There can't possibly be anything easier than murder. Uh, and the difficulty is committing a murder without committing oneself as the murderer. It's this shyness about owning up to a murder, this silly modesty the murderers have about creating their own masterpieces that makes the trouble. They will stick to this rather old-fashioned idea of killing somebody without being found out. And that's what restrains them, even in a room full of daggers. Oh, uh, we're having a, a little difficulty in getting some attention at the moment, but I think it's... Uh, oh. Shall we wait? If you like. Are those the people you've been following? What? My, my dear Flumper, when my closest friend brings me to spend a weekend at a not particularly good hotel in a not particularly attractive village, I have a suspicion that he's on business rather than pleasure bent. We are as much out of place here as they are. Yes, and you should be the inquiry agent, not thank, I. Thank you, yes, yes, yes. Who engaged you? His wife? Yes. Well, I thought you didn't accept such cases. I don't. But his wife came to my office. 
She said that uh, her husband had stolen a piece of jewellery belonging to her, a bracelet. It was he who had given it to her in the first place. So, naturally, my client was curious. Well, now we know what has happened to it. Well, how did you know he was coming here? His wife found the address written oh, down. Yes, I'm sure. In his pocket, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. He but is supposed to be in Paris at a meeting. Instead of that, he stays here under a false name. What, his man and wife? Mm -hmm. I understand he is quite high up in the foreign office. Oh? Well, that's odd. What is? Well, because if... Ah, uh, yes, I won't keep you a moment, gentlemen. Oh, that's Look here, my wife and I would like to have a drink before dinner. We've been sitting here in this Persian bazaar for several minutes. Perhaps you'd prefer we'd move to another hotel? Not at all, sir. Most humble apologies. I will attend to you all directly. Damned incompetence. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that oh, was... My, my dear. What is so funny? <laughs> my dear old friend. Thank you, Mr. Mercer. Clear for you in just a few moments. Yeah. 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 Oh, you never said anything like it in your life. No. Now, no, sir, madam, renewed apologies. At your service. Did you have any dry shoes? Right, oh, it's my round. Ah. Double scotch and soda for me, then serve the rest of them. But in commercial room prices, mind, I'm not paying extra just because I'm obliged to drink in a in a Bombay boardy house. <laughs> Uh, and a uh, large gin for the landlord. Him, him and me has got business to transact. I've got to soften him up. <coughs> Who are these people? They're commercial travellers. And I think I've seen one of them before. Oh? It was in a car. Here, this won't do, you know. I represent the best wine and spirits house in the country, and you're serving up our product in a bar that looks like the Crystal Palace. <laughs> Mr. Dukes, please. If you're not careful, I should take my business elsewhere. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't desert us, Mr. Dukes. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah. The rest of us are crying out for orders, staying awake nights worrying, and Dukes there's threatening not to sell his stuff, if you please. Well, whatever, next. Uh, I can afford to, because I sell the best, that's why. Oh, An inn or a public house without my spirits on its shelves and my wine in its cellars be out of business in a week. Oh, oh, come on now. No, no, no. No, I mean it, I mean it. 30 quid last week in commissions. How much? I don't know how you do it. I'll make a fiver in a good week. It's easy. I sell them what they can't do without. I sell the best. Go on, get a move on there, then. Oh, uh, if you please. Excuse me, sir. Ah, good evening, Mr. Ragley, sir. I won't keep you waiting a moment. Here we are, sir. I do hope that you and Madam will overlook the confusion. It's all due to the ridiculous. Uh, Mr. Ragley. Oh, it's you. Yes, I'd like you to meet uh, my very old friend, Monsieur Flombo. This is, uh, this is Mr. Brackley. Charm, sir. Are you a Frenchie? Frenchies, darkies, papists, Jews. I don't know which country I'm in anymore. I'm thinking of inventing a new parlor game called Find the Englishman. Uh, it's very amusing. You think so? Good Lord, no, not that pair. Um, now, if you would care to take a seat. Quite so, but this is a bar room. Well, sir, I think I have explained to you. It's the decorators. The tea lounge is closed. Even so. And as it's dinner time, we can't serve teas in the dining room. But if you would care to take a seat, I'll bring you a nice pot of tea. <coughs> in the circumstances, very well. I apologize for this, Mr. Akbar. Oh, dearie me, they didn't ought to do it, you know. My doctor says I'm to avoid shocks. Pots of tea. Oh, Lord, I'm going weak at the knees. Oh, well, yeah, landlord, wills you ruffian. Give me another double before yeah. I drop down dead. Yes, Mr. Oh. Pots of tea in a Persian beer garden. Oh, God oh, almighty. Dear. I am used to being mocked, sir, by the likes of you and your companions. I will ask you not to take the Lord's name in vain in my presence. Oh, I, I'm all apologies, sir. I am truly. It was the horrible shock, you see. And I do hope, with deference to your coffee-coloured friend, that the tea will be Indian. I will not be silent. This man, despite your sneers, is a model of true Christianity. In the soil of his native land, the hop has never been grown nor the wine borne fruit. You call yourselves Christians? Oh, come on. Oh, yes, poison your souls as well as your bodies. But in the world to come, this man will be in Abraham's bosom. While all of you will cry out in vain for one drop of water yeah, to save yeah, the Give me to rest, will you? Yeah. Sir, sir, with respect to our creating a disturbance, yeah, please. Thank you very much. I have done. Glory be. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, Mr. Ragley, your usual, I expect so. At least cherry brandy does taste of cherries. Well, allow me, Mr. Ragley, please. I'd be obliged. You know, beer doesn't taste of hops anymore, or cider of apples. Thank you. You know, I know a thing or two. And I mean to stop our people being poisoned by bad drink. Yes, it's the same every night, sir. 
every night. I'm delighted to see one Christian in this room. You speak the truth. Drink is poison. The first man in history to speak out against it was the illustrious Mohammed. It is laid down in his teaching. God damn your soul! Eh? Oh dear. I was talking about that drink. Now you chime in and say that Englishmen shouldn't drink beer because wine was disallowed in the desert by that dirty old humbug Mohammed. Oh my God! Oh, you dog! You insulting dog! Here, gentlemen, here, here. Yeah. gentlemen, look, sir, I must ask you and your friend to... Well, I'll be damned. God bless you, I said. You're the first man I've met in 20 years. Yes, I do hope there'll be no need to take the matter further, Mr. Ragley. Take it further? I'd buy him a drink if you were allowed one. I had no business to insult his religion. And I wish to God you skunks would have the courage to try and kill a man. Not for insulting your religion. You haven't any. But for insulting anything, even your drink. Your good health, sir. Well, fun's over. Who's round, is it? Yeah, uh, Mr. Wills, yes. uh, the commercial room is cleared. Ah, oh, thank you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, if you take your drinks with you, please, the commercial room is oh, High time, too. It's still your glass. Donald! Oh, look at that. Thank you. Hey, that man! What man? One be a minute. I'll say you there. No, me? Is your name Vance? Yes, what about him? I've got something to say to you. No, I don't think so. Look, you better listen. I say it better. Well, now that your friend has called everyone a skunk, peace seems to have been restored. Yes, indeed. Oh, such excitement. <laughs> yeah. What's the matter? That's strange. What is? Whiskey. Well, what would you expect? Uh, landlord, excuse Sorry. me. When that rather flamboyant gentleman bought you a drink just now, what did you have? A gin, sir. Yes, I thought so. Thank you. Yes. Oh, haven't we met before, Summer? I don't believe so. I should have known your friend. Well, you don't come back to me sometime. Wills, say me again, please. Yes, sir. And for my friends. Oh, no, no, really, sir. I think perhaps dinner. Oh, yes. Well, please yourself. Well, excuse us for dinner. You found him? I'd arranged with the local priest to say early mass in his church, and I came down here to look for my hat. You remember I threw it at our Indian friend? Well, you said it would be easy to commit murder here. Yes. I also said I wasn't thinking about the daggers. Well, someone stabbed him. Oh, yes. You know, the one murderer who does not mind being found out or not, is the religious fanatic. It was the Indian, of course. He probably thinks that if he is hanged, he'll go straight to paradise for defending the honor of his prophet. Yes, there is that. It would be reasonable to suppose that our Muslim friend had stabbed him, but I was thinking that... What? Well, I was... I was thinking... In a way, it doesn't matter who stabbed him. You know, is this the new morality? Or the old casuistry? Or are the priests condoning murder now? Oh, Flombo, please. I didn't say it didn't matter who murdered him. Of course, the man who stabbed him might be the same man who murdered him. On the other hand, it might be somebody quite different. I can imagine other reasons for other people sticking a knife into this poor old boy. But I should say who murdered him matters very much indeed. I will call the police. Yes, yes, immediately.
You know, I ought to be home by now. First time I've missed Sunday dinner in 14 years. I don't know what she'll think. For myself, I claim no special privileges, no immunity. Oh, give him a medal, someone. But I would have expected them to respect my cloth. The Lord is not slighted. You can't come in here. Nobody can. Off oh, it. Go on out. Oh, leave the lad alone. Uh, Constable. Uh, Sorry, sir. Inspector's orders. Well, it is rather urgent. Uh, call in nature, is it? Sir? Well, yes, you might say that, yes. Oh, very well, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Officer. Yeah, uh, officer. Officer. Yeah, yeah. Come here. Gentlemen. Please. <laughs> Boy, may I have a word with you, if you don't mind? So, Mr. Jukes and the other travellers were in this bar for perhaps oh, ten minutes. Then they took their drinks and moved into the commercial room. It was cheaper there, you see. Home from home. And then? Well, it's as I say, sir. The priest and his friend went off to dinner, and then the preacher, Mr. Price Jones, and his uh, Indian friend, they had their tea, and then they left. Leaving Mr. Ragley? Yes. Well, he said he wouldn't be wanting anything else, so I went in to serve the commercial gentleman. He was here alone? Yes. Well, I wasn't to know, was I? I did pass by here an hour or so later, and I saw the lights were out, so I thought he'd gone home. You didn't come in? Well, I had no reason to, you see. Uh, in any case, I had some business to transact with Mr. Dukes. Wines and Spirits business. All down in my order book, signed and sealed. Delivery within the week. Now, where was this conversation? This was in my office, sir. We... Oh, Inspector. Yes, what do you want? Uh, might I have a word with you? No, I'm sorry, Father. You'll have to wait. Well, I can't. Well? Well, in private. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. That's all for the present. Oh, look here, sir. Myself and the others, it's a Sunday. We've all got homes to go to. None of us has any connection with what happened here, so do we have to hang about? Well, I suppose... I'll consider it. Thank you. Now, sir, we're alone. Oh, yes, it was you who discovered the body. Oh, no, 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 no. Father, according to Inspector, my Inspector, I think you and I both realise that the person who really discovered the body was the person who thrust the knife into it. And Mr. Ragley had been dead for several hours before he was stabbed. You know that, do you? There was no blood. Do you also happen to know how he did die? Poison, I should imagine. Poison. Uh, name of Brown. I think I've heard of you. Yes, it is rather a common name, isn't it, Inspector? In a way, I thought of poison before the crime was committed. Oh, if it's poison, there'll be precious little to go on. Of course, a lot of officious servants must do their duty as usual and wash out all the glasses. <laughs> if it weren't for everybody else's efficiency, we detectives might be quite efficient. Yes, that's true. I sometimes think criminals invented hygiene, or perhaps hygienic reformers invented crime. They look like it, some of them, don't they? Everybody talks about foul dens and filthy slums where crime can run riot. But really, it's just the other way around. They're called foul, not because crimes are committed, Inspector, but because crimes are discovered. Oh, yes, it's in the neat, clean and tidy places where crime runs riot. Mm -hmm. No mud to make footprints, no dregs to contain poison, nice, willing servants to wash away all traces of evidence, and the murderer killing and cremating six wives, and all for the want of a little Christian dirt. Mm -hmm. Oh, forgive me, Inspector. I, uh, I express myself perhaps with too much warmth. Now, what I really wanted to talk to you about was the quick one. The what? Oh, well, I don't know what his name is. That's what I call him, you see. Uh, all I know is that he was a Scotsman, had a quick one, and left. Father Now, Brown. please, Inspector, bear with me. Now, last night, my friend, Monsieur Flambeau, and I came into the spa, and it was empty. Then the others rolled in, and they took their drinks off, uh, the travellers, I mean, into the commercial room. Now, there's a glass of whiskey left behind. Not well, one of them had left his drink behind. Oh, Inspector, you don't know commercial travellers. They're mostly simple men. They grub for a living, and they're not exactly what you call overpaid. Most of them like to get home to the wife and kids on a Sunday. Some of them have, may have several wives. May even have murdered several wives. But when they buy a drink, they expect a full measure. They aren't dukes or big businessmen. They'd as soon leave a watch and chain behind as an unfinished drink. No, I take it as certain that the person who left that drink unfinished was someone we don't know about, someone we haven't heard of yet, a man who had a quick one and left. <laughs> you have a fertile imagination, Father. I also have a witness, Inspector, now. Now, yes, now, when I came in here yesterday, there was a small boy cleaning those steps. 
Now, I just had a word with him. It appears that our friend, the quick one, came into this bar, stayed a few moments, and then left, inquiring of the boy about trains for Reading. The boy described him. Uh, well, he only knows that he was a Scotsman and, and wore a cape. But I tell you this, Inspector, you find our quick one, and you won't have far to look for the murderer. Reading, you say? Well, I've never had much to do with setting police machinery in motion or tracking down criminals. But this man must be found, whether he's at Reading or the ends of the earth. Father Brown, I'm obliged to you. Yes, thank you. A few minutes ago, Mr. Jukes asked if he and the other travellers could go home. I saw you shake your head. Now, why? If the man we're after is miles from uh, here... Inspector, somebody in this hotel may have a great deal to tell you. Ah, you mean about the stabbing. Well, I take it, however, you can vouch for your friend, Monsieur Flower. Oh, completely. <laughs> I'll ask him to come and join you. You put through an urgent call to Reading CID, please, and I'll take it in your manager's office. Yeah, most certainly, sir. CID. Police. Oh. Just ask the man. You, boy, come here. I want to talk with you, my lad. Into the office and wait for me. Go on, no one's going to eat you. CID. I told him. I said to him, you may have your job to do, Inspector, but just because you know who stuck a knife in old Ragley, it's no reason why I and my colleagues should be treated like criminals. Good old Duke, eh? <laughs> I'm not without influence, I said, and my managing director will be in touch with Scotland Yacht. Mr. Flambeau, I think you'll find your friend in the bar. Thank you, Inspector. Now, gentlemen, you are free to leave. Right. But I would ask you to remain on the hotel premises for the next few hours. My apologies for the inconvenience. Hmm. There you are, you see. He's not acting so high and mighty now, is he? <laughs> well, who's for a drink? That's Good idea. Good idea. Yes. Thank you. Ring the bell. Go on, <laughs> Oh, uh, can I get something for you, sir? Thank you, no, Mr. Wills. Yes, uh, it's a terrible thing to have happened. Poor, harmless old gentleman. Harmless? Yes, well, his, uh, his bark was worse than his bite. Right? Was it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it'll ruin this place. Redecorating, not even finished. I don't know what we shall do. I've changed my mind, Mr. Wills. Might I, do you think, have a cherry brandy? Yes, sir. Well, that's odd. I have been released. Has something happened? At Flombo, there is what the police like to call a new line of inquiry. The inspector is now convinced that Mr. Ragley was poisoned. Poisoned? I shouldn't go on looking for that bottle of cherry brandy if I were you, Mr. Wills. If the murderer hasn't removed it, it will probably be in the police laboratory by now. Now I begin to understand. Mr. Ragley was not stabbed to death. After death. Not to it, Flombeau. He was stabbed by somebody who was afraid the blame might fall on him. And he, in turn, in his panic, tried to fix it on the Indian. And that's why I said it would be easy to commit a murder in this room. An empty bar, no one to see you exchange the poison bottle for another. And, of course, suspicion would at first fall on the manager. On me? <laughs> I mean, no one could think such How a thing. How is it, Mr. Wills, that you were not the first person to discover the body? Yeah, well, I have, I have explained that to the inspector, sir. You see, uh, I saw that the lights were out in here, so I, I assumed the bar was empty. But like most victims of poison, uh, Mr. Ragley died alone. Uh, I hardly think he would have turned off the light out of a sense of occasion. Uh, pardon? There's no penalty in law, Mr. Wills, for murdering a dead man, as far as I know. I suggest you make a clean breast of it to the inspector. Yes, but I did nothing. Nothing I... very terrible, I grant you. you. You found a corpse and you stuck a knife into it. You lost your head. I think it's time you retrieved it. Flombo, I have a call to make. Will you come with me, please? Yes, by all means. Oh, Inspector. I 
think Mr. Wills may have something to say to you. Yes? Good afternoon, Miss Ragley. I do hope you remember me. Oh, yes. Uh, may I come in? Uh, oh, I'd like you to meet a very old friend, uh, Monsieur Flambeau. This is Miss Ragley. Charmed, Miss Ragley. I came round to offer my condolences and to ask if there was anything I could do to help. That's very kind of you. No, nothing. Perhaps you'd like to come in for a moment? Yes. I, um, I would like to meet your visitor. If you wish. Oh, good afternoon. My name's Brown. I think we, we know each other by sight. This is Mr. Vance. Oh, yes. We would have met here yesterday, wouldn't we, Mr. Vance? Only you seem to be in a bit of a hurry. Uh, I wasn't here yesterday. Oh, I think you were. I mean, I heard Miss Ragley talking to her father about you in the hall. Uh, oh, please forgive me, Miss Edith. I, I will listen. It's a professional weakness. Uh, I don't see it's any of your business. Oh, come, come, Mr. Vance. This murder surely is everyone's business. This one? You mean not others? Well, uh... All murders matter, Flambeau, as all men matter. It's one of the hardest things in theology to believe. That all men matter to God, and God only knows why. But John Ragley mattered more than most. But you hardly knew him. I know that he was one of a great line of some half-dozen men who might have saved England from becoming a commercial wilderness. He cared, Miss Ragley, your father. He cared, like Dean Swift, or Dr. Johnson, or old William Cobbett cared. They had the reputation for being surly and savage, but they were loved by their friends, and they deserved to be. You saw last night how he stood up to his enemy and forgave him, as only fighters can forgive. He jolly well did do what that temperance lecturer only preached about, Christianity, Mr. Vance. Oh, yes. John Ragley mattered a great deal. Are you married, Mr. Vance? Married? Her father thought that you may have been. Yes, I am. Frank and his wife are separated. But I had nothing to fear from Mr. Ragley, if that's what you're driving at. Father Brown, you saw one side of my father. I lived with him. You see, my mother, who's dead now, left him 15 years ago for another man. She spent the rest of her life with him in Scotland. From then on, as far as I was concerned, he tarred every man with the same brush. He should have been a detective. If I as much as looked at a man, he'd have him investigated. And then if that failed, he'd use threats. I'd be disinherited. I'd never see another penny of his money. It wasn't just Frank he objected to. It was anyone. I see. And now? I don't know. Hmm. Well, I think soon the inspector may have some news for us, Flambeau. We'd better get back to the hotel. Oh, before you go, uh, a drink? Thank you, no, 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 no. It's possible that Mr. Ragley's murderer may be arrested tonight, Mr. Vance. I think perhaps you ought to be there. Goodbye, Miss Edith. Don't bother to come to the door. Excuse me. My regrets, Miss Ragley. What you said in there, is it true? Is there to be an arrest? That all depends whether the police find the quick one. Don't go single penny, then. Excuse me, sir. Hi. Were you at a village called Greater Ilbury late yesterday afternoon? I was. You're just one. Never mind your random business. I have a train to take. I'm detaining you in connection with the matter. Here, get your hands off. Get him. Why, like hell, you get him. It is wrong, Inspector. No, it is a grievous sin to keep men of God from their duties. 
Mr. Akbar and myself have promised to speak at the Temperance Hall at Guildford this evening. Now, you know perfectly well we have nothing whatever to do with this crime, and yet you persist in interfering with the Lord's work. I'll make a bargain with you, Mr. Price Jones. I am listening. I have no right to detain either of you, gentlemen, but if you'll remain here quietly without being a blithering nuisance, I just may decide not to charge you, Mr. Akbar, with attempted murder. Father Brown. Any news, Inspector? Not yet. And I can't keep people under this roof indefinitely. At least I've had it out with Wills, the manager. He confessed? To the stabbing, yes. Apparently he did it out of sheer funk. Legally, of course, we haven't a thing against him, more's the pity. Has it occurred to you, Inspector, to wonder why Wills was so certain that Mr. Ragley had been murdered? Eh? Why not assume death from natural causes? A heart attack, perhaps? Could it be that he was expecting the murder? Yes, but how? I've no idea. I have my suspicions, of course, but, well, the murderer could turn out to be anybody. Anybody? Father Brown, you told me that once we got our hands on the man you call the quick one, Inspector, we'd have a... No, what? It's Redding on the telephone for you. Redding? You seem thoughtful. Yes. I have just remembered something. Mm -hmm. That man, the one I've been following, last night, Rackley thought he recognized him. In fact, he said, it will come to me. Well, <laughs> he probably saw his picture in the newspapers. But don't you see, the man is an important government official. Well. And yet, he stays here under an assumed name with a woman who is not his wife. Now, if he were recognized, there would be a great scandal. But Radley does recognize him, or thinks he does. Can you think of a better oh, motive? You, for... sir, you seem to have an obsessive interest in my wife and me. I... Ever since we arrived in this miserable hotel, you've been staring us out of countenance and dogging our footsteps. Now, I don't know what newspaper you represent, and I care less. But my wife finds your manner offensive, and so do I. I have no statement for you now or hereafter. My dear. Pabie! What impudence! Does he take me for a fool? No. A journalist. Well, he is mad. Oh, embarrassed, perhaps. Flambeau, I'm surprised at you. You, a Frenchman, above all people, don't recognize a honeymoon couple when you see them? A what? Oh, come on. Last night, that man complained loudly and angrily about the service. Now, when people go to an hotel for an immoral weekend, they don't usually draw attention to themselves. Also, he and his lady wife were both wearing brand new wedding rings. But his wife engaged me. Oh, you shouldn't take everybody at their word, Flambeau. A man in the public eye. He marries a young lady much younger than he is. Well, it, if he's at all sensitive to ridicule, it's not the sort of thing you shout from the rooftops. Far better a quiet wedding, a honeymoon incognito at an unlikely hotel. Hmm? But I was engaged by his, his... ex-mistress? Or perhaps his lady friend? <laughs> Whoever it was, she seems to have suspected what he was up to. Uh, probably too proud to come down and see for herself. Well, I am. Mother Brown? Yes. We've got him. Huh? I don't know how you do it. You knew he was a murderer before anyone else knew he was a man. He was, oh, he was nobody. He was nothing. Just no. a fine shade of doubt based on a whiskey glass. Oh, no. We've got him and he's on his way here now. Mm. Put up a desperate fight. Roughed up two constables. Oh, yes, no. a killer. There's no doubt of it. Oh, I've done it again. Yes, you certainly have. <laughs> it's thanks to you that we find... Inspector, you don't understand. I'm always doing it, and I don't know why. I do try to, to, to say what I mean, but everybody else means such a lot by what I say. Well, what's wrong? We have our man. Oh, our witness. Somebody knew that poor old Ragley drank cherry brandy and nothing else, and came in here every evening. And Now, that man was in here alone, either doctoring the brandy or exchanging the bottles. Now, remember our Scotsman, uh, the quick one. He came in here for a drink. Who served him? Once we know that, we'll have our murderer. Oh, Lord. He's being brought here in handcuffs in a police van. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I'm glad that I am not the only one who has made a mistake this weekend. Who do you think I am? Rockefeller? <laughs> <laughs> what I say is it's poker what separates the men from the boys. Then we don't speculate, cannot accumulate. Yeah, I'm glad to say it won't be necessary for you to remain here much longer. Yeah, well, First, so... however... Would you all please step into the other bar? Just a formality. High time, too. Oh. Yeah, what formality? Well, maybe they're going to hang us. 
That's a formality. <laughs> Into the bar, if you don't mind. Here, come on. You too, sir. Mm -hmm. And Miss Paravent? I. If you please. What about Father Brown, you'd better be right for all our sakes. Now. What the hell's the meaning of this? You, are you responsible? Mr. Grant, allow me to express my... You can express them in a court of law when I take action against you for assault and wrongful arrest. There has been a mistake. Hey, yours! I've half a mind to punch your silly English face in. Oh, I do hope not. To. There's been one murder done already. I know, Bill. Murder? Mr. Grant, your arrest was partly my fault. I do ask your forgiveness. Uh, but last night, a man was killed. Here. And you may have been the only witness. What, Mr. Wood? I saw nothing. Sir, did you come into this bar yesterday, shortly after it opened? Aye, I did. And were served with a glass of whiskey? Is that against the law? Not that it would surprise me if it was. In spite of your ill treatment, Mr. Grant, I'm sure you'll wish to serve the ends of justice. Would you step into this bar for just a moment? Witness? What the hell am I supposed to have witnessed? Well, sir, we are not sure what servant, whether the barman or the manager of the hotel or some other person, served you yesterday afternoon. Would you look round this room and tell me whether you see that person present? I went in there yesterday and he was on his own helping himself. Yes, but, Mr. Grant, exactly what do you mean by that, please? Well, he was there behind the bar with a bottle of cherry brandy. Can you abide the muck myself? Would you be good enough to point him out? I had recognized him anywhere. He was big enough. Do you have all your in servants as grand as yours? Did you know that Jukes was the murderer? Ah, uh, no. No, no, no. But I should have been surprised if he were not. Uh, he dealt in wines and spirits. Nothing simpler than to conceal a poisoned bottle in his sample case and wait for the right moment to make the exchange. Hmm. Also, poor old Ragley himself told us the motive. As he told you, perhaps. He told everybody. He said he was about to expose a scandal in the business of selling drink. Oh, it's a common enough scandal nowadays. A salesman swindles his own company, gives and takes secret commissions, and gets the monopoly of all drinks sold in the public bar. Well, if Dukes had been found out, it would have cost him a year or two in jail. The Wills was in the scandal, too, of course. Uh, well, shall we go? Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm. He, you know... He had such a rich manner. Well, the manager? No, 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 no. Jukes. I kept asking myself why he should sound so disgustingly rich when all his colleagues were fairly poor. I think I knew he was a sham, though, when I saw that enormous type in he wore. Because it was fake? No, because it was genuine. Pardon.
Public meeting. Sobriety is next to godliness. The Reverend Price Jones will speak on the evils of drink and urge his listeners to heed the teachings of Mohammed. Mohammed, eh? The devil he will. Not in this corner of England. My coat. Father. Father. Now type that letter as I dictated it. Mohammed, eh? We'll see about that. Hello? Exchange? Uh, this is 115. I want the hotel, please. Hello? May I speak to Mr. Vance? My friends, I see a question trembling on your lips. Who, you are saying, is this man? My friend is a follower of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad, the first religious leader to forbid the consumption of alcoholic beverages. And what, you are asking, has he to do with this Christian assembly? Damn fools and damn foreigners! Shame on us! That we have not taken the lesson of Mohammed and the American Swart. In every home in England where there is drink, I tell you there is misery. Bordadash! Poverty, ragged children! Women whose husbands are no longer men but drunken animals! How many broken homes, how many foul crimes are caused by the innocent glass of wine? The harmless tot of spirits, the convivial pint of ale. I tell you... I've never heard such damn nonsense in all my life. Sir, you're a fool. My friends, let us not condemn that misguided man. He has been led grievously into the ways of the sinner. Rather, let us pray that he shall one day be led into the meadows of salvation and not the hot fields of the damned. Let us pray for a moment in silence. Good day to you, sir. Damn vandals. I beg your pardon? Look at that. Look down there. There's no stream anymore. It's a rubbish tip. Tin cans, bottles, bits of an old perambulator. My God, that oh, guy is. Can't say we've got very much time for papers either. Always on their knees praying for the conversion of England, confounded cheek. Fond of a drink, though, I've heard it so. Have I seen you before? I doubt it. I'm staying down here for the weekend with a friend. What, that the hotel? Yes. I'll tell you a thing or two about that place. My name's Agley. Come along. I'll show you around the village. Oh. I used to be very proud of it once. Now, everywhere you look, there's thievery, venality, and couldn't care less. Never mind. Shut one eye and you won't notice. Is your friend uh, with you? No, he stayed behind at the hotel. He's reading. You have a room for me, I think? Name, sir. Jeffries. Oh, Jeffries. Yes, I have a nice front double for you and madam. Will you please to sign? We should like some tea immediately. Oh, I'm afraid just at the moment, sir, the tea room is being redecorated. But if you would care to have it in your room. We would prefer it there. Splendid. Number 35. My dear. Tea will be sent up directly. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jeffries, there's rather a difference in their ages. Yes, are, are the decorators finished in the commercial room yet? Well, they said about half an hour. Yeah, we'll tell them not a minute longer. 
You might say, please. I've got to keep myself, and I've got to keep her. You can't get blood out of a stone. It's not something she believes in. I cannot borrow money from my father. What's so difficult about it? Well, can't you just ask him? Say you uh, want to buy some clothes, or ask him for an allowance. Oh, you earn it, for God's sake. Father is feudal. He doesn't think that women are entitled to any money. He thinks they should be grateful for their board and lodging and ask for nothing else. My bad drink. Now you chime in and say that Englishmen shouldn't drink beer because wine was disallowed in the desert by that dirty old humbug Mohammed. Oh my God! Dog! You insulting dog! Here, gentlemen, here, here, here. Gentlemen, look, sir, I must ask you and your friend to. Well, I'll be damned. God bless you, Ryson. You're the first man I've met in 20 years. Yes, I do hope there'll be no need to take the matter further, Mr. Ragley. Take it further? I'd buy him a drink if you were allowed one. I had no business to insult his religion. And I wish to God you skunks would have the courage to try and kill a man. Not for insulting your religion. You haven't any. But for insulting anything, even your drink. Your good health, sir. Well... Fun's over. Who's round, is it? Yeah, Lee. Um, Mr. Wills, yes. uh, the commercial room is cleared. Ah, oh, thank you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, if you take your drinks with you, please, the commercial room is cleared. High time, too. It's still your glass. Carl! Oh, look at that green eye. Hey, that man! What man? One be a minute. I'll see you there. No, me? Is your name Vance? Yes, what about him? I've got something to say to you. No, I don't think so. Look, you better listen. I say it better. Well, now that your friend has called everyone a skunk, peace seems to have been restored. Yes, indeed. Oh, such excitement. I think. Yeah. What's the matter? That's strange. What is? That's whiskey. Well, what would you expect? Uh, landlord, excuse me, when that rather flamboyant gentleman bought you a drink just now, what did you have? A gin, sir. Yes, I thought so. Thank you. Oh, haven't we met before, Summer? I don't believe so. I should have known your family. Well, it'll come back to me sometime. Well, same again, please. Yes, And for my friends. Oh, no, no, really, sir. I think perhaps dinner. Oh, yes. Well, please, yourself. Sir. Well, excuse us for dinner. Not only has the property known as 14 Parsons Lane been allowed to turn into a verminous slum, but it is owned by none other than one Alicia Goodall. Who, sir, may your readers ask, is Alicia Goodall? That, sir, is the maiden name of the wife of the chairman of our county council. I am so you. Anything wrong? You can't say that. Why can't I? It's true. Father, the wife of the chairman is Mrs. Stanton. She's the kindest person. She's a slum landlord. Or rather, he is. He's hiding behind her petticoats and I mean to flush him out. She'll be disgraced. She does so much good in the town. And it's the do-gooders who are turning what once may have been a green and pleasant land into one great big tenement, urban and rural. A thieves' paradise. Because they prefer not to look at what's ugly and corrupt. No. You think with your affections, Edith. 
like your mother. England is being sold to the highest bidder and you really couldn't care. Could you, my child? I'm not a child. Hello? I'm sorry, I'm afraid you have the wrong number. Who was that? I don't know, some woman. Are you quite sure it wasn't some man? What? You're a poor liar too, like your mother, Edith. Listen to me. When a daughter of mine chooses to make a fool of herself... I don't know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, but I do. Now, you know nothing goes on in this town without my knowledge. There's a man called Vance. A commercial traveller. Uh, Father, the post. Post's been and gone. Public meeting. Sobriety is next to godliness. The Reverend Price Jones will speak on the evils of drink and urge his listeners to heed the teachings of Mohammed. Mohammed, eh? The devil he will. Not in this corner of England. My coat. Father? Father. Now type that letter as I dictated it. Mohammed, eh? We'll see about that. Hello? Exchange? Uh, this is 115. I want the hotel, please. My dear. The tea will be sent up directly. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Jeffries, there's rather a difference in their ages. Yes, are, are the decorators finished in the commercial room yet? Well, they said about half an hour. Yeah, we'll tell them not a minute longer. You might say, please. I've got to keep myself, and I've got to keep her. You can't get blood out of a stone. It's not something she believes in. I cannot borrow money from my father. What's so difficult about it? Well, can't you just ask him? Say you uh, want to buy some clothes. Or ask him for an allowance. Oh, you earn it, for God's sake. Father is feudal. He doesn't think that women are entitled to any money. He thinks they should be grateful for their board and lodging and ask for nothing else. Well, if I'd been you, I'd have walked out on him years ago. I would have done if anybody had asked me. Well, this is getting us nowhere. You better go. I can hear Father coming. Now, just take a look at these files. That'll show you what I'm up against. What are you doing in here, Edith? I was returning one of your books. Well, in its proper place, I hope. My daughter, Father uh, Brown. How do you do? How do you do? Excuse me. Yes. Well, do sit down, Father, and make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll just give you a random selection. Land speculation. Jobbery by a county councillor. Sir Basil Snellford that puts himself above the law because he's a Tory and a magistrate. Rotten meat on sale to the public. And the so-called health inspector turns a blind eye. Well, I soon put a stop to that. I say you do keep busy, Mr. Rackley. Well, somebody has to. They really? call me a crank, you know. Really? Yes, because I keep them honest. Oh. And if the newspapers wouldn't print my letters, I'd print them myself. <laughs> yes! I've pamphlets made. Are you married, Mr. Vance? Married? Her father 
thought that you may have been. Yes, I am. Frank and his wife are separated. But I have nothing to fear from Mr. Ragley, if that's what you're driving at. Father Brown, you saw one side of my father. I lived with him. You see, my mother, who's dead now, left him 15 years ago for another man. She spent the rest of her life with him in Scotland. From then on, as far as I was concerned, he tarred every man with the same brush. He should have been a detective. If I as much as looked at a man, he'd have him investigated. Then if that failed, he'd use threats. I'd be disinherited. I'd never see another penny of his money. It wasn't just Frank he objected to. It was anyone. I see. And now? I don't know. Well, I think soon the inspector may have some news for us, Lombo. We'd better get back to the hotel. Oh, before you go, uh, a drink? Thank you, no, 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 no. It's possible that Mr. Ragley's murderer may be arrested tonight, Mr. Vance. I think perhaps you ought to be there. Goodbye, Miss Edith. Don't bother to come to the door. Excuse me. My regrets, Miss Ragley. What you said in there, is it true? Is there to be an arrest? That all depends whether the police find the quick one. Don't go single penny, then. Excuse me, sir. Hi. Were you at a village called Greater Ilbury late yesterday or I was. Uh, just one moment. Mind your under business, I have a train to I'm detaining you in connection with the matter of... Here, get your hands off. Get him! Why, hell, you get him! It is wrong, Inspector. No, it is a grievous sin to keep men of God from their duties. Mr. Akbar and myself have promised to speak at the Temperance Hall at Guildford this evening. Now, you know perfectly well we have nothing whatever to do with this crime. And yet you persist in interfering with the Lord's work. I'll make a bargain with you, Mr. Price-Jones. I am listening. I have no right to detain either of you gentlemen, but if you'll remain here quietly without being a blithering nuisance, I just may decide not to charge you, Mr. Akbar, with attempted murder. Father Brown. Any news, Inspector? Not yet. And I can't keep people under this roof indefinitely. At least I've had it out with Wills, the manager. He confessed? To the stabbing, yes. Apparently... Are you married, Mr. Vance? Married? Her father thought that you may have been. Yes, I am. Frank and his wife are separated. But I have nothing to fear from Mr. Ragley, if that's what you're driving at. Father Brown, you saw one side of my father. I lived with him. You see, my mother, who's dead now, left him 15 years ago for another man. She spent the rest of her life with him in Scotland. From then on, as far as I was concerned, he tarred every man with the same brush. He should have been a detective. If I as much as looked at a man, he'd have him investigated. Then if that failed, he'd use threats. I'd be disinherited. I'd never see another penny of his money. It wasn't just Frank he objected to. It was anyone. I see. And now? I don't know. Well, I think soon the inspector may have some news for us, Lombo. We'd better get back to the hotel. Oh, before you go, uh, a drink? Thank you, no, 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 no. It's possible that Mr. Ragley's murderer may be arrested tonight, Mr. Vance. I think perhaps you ought to be there. Goodbye, Miss Edith. Don't bother to come to the door. Excuse me. My regrets, Miss Ragley. What you said in there, is it true? Is there to be an arrest? That all depends whether the police find the quick one. Don't go single penny, then. Excuse me, sir. Hi. Were you at a village called Greater Ilbury late yesterday? Or I was. 
Uh, just one moment. Never mind your under business. I have a train to I'm detaining you in connection with the matter. Here, get your hands off. Get him. Why, right, hell, you get him. It is wrong, Inspector. No, it is a grievous sin to keep men of God from their duties. Mr. Akbar and myself have promised to speak at the Temperance Hall at Guildford this evening. Now, you know perfectly well we have nothing whatever to do with this crime, and yet you persist in interfering with the Lord's work. I'll make a bargain with you, Mr. Price Jones. I am listening. I have no right to detain either of you, gentlemen, but if you'll remain here quietly without being a blithering nuisance, I just may decide not to charge you, Mr. Akbar, with attempted murder. Father Brown. Any news, Inspector? Not yet. And I can't keep people under this roof indefinitely. At least I've had it out with Wills, the manager. He confessed? To the stabbing, yes. Apparently he did it out of sheer... F I think you'll find your friend in the bar. Thank you, Inspector. Now, gentlemen, you are free to leave. Right. But I would ask you to remain on the hotel premises for the next few hours. My apologies for the inconvenience. <laughs> there you are, you see. He's not acting so high and mighty now, is he? <laughs> well, who's for a drink? Good idea. Bring the bells. Oh, uh, can I get something for you, sir? Uh, thank you, no, Mr. Wills. Yes, uh, it's a terrible thing to have happened. Poor, harmless old gentleman. Harmless? Yes, well, his, uh, his bark was worse than his bite. Like. Was it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it'll ruin this place. Redecorating, not even finished. I don't know what we shall do. I've changed my mind, Mr. Wills. Might I, do you think, have a cherry brandy? Yes, sir. Well, that's odd. I have been released. Has something happened? At Flambeau, there is what the police like to call a new line of inquiry. The inspector is now convinced that Mr. Ragley was poisoned. Poisoned? I shouldn't go on looking for that bottle of cherry brandy if I were you, Mr. Wills. If the murderer hasn't removed it, it will probably be in the police laboratory by now. Now I begin to understand. Mr. Ragley was not stabbed to death. After death. Not to it, Flambeau. He was stabbed by somebody who was afraid the blame might fall on him. And he, in turn, in his panic, tried to fix it on the Indian. And that's why I said it would be easy to commit a murder in this room. An empty bar, no one to see you exchange the poison bottle for another. And, of course, suspicion would at first fall on the manager. On me? <laughs> well, no one could think such How a thing. How is it, Mr. Wills, that you were not the first person to discover the body? Yeah, well, I have, I have explained that to the inspector, sir. You see, uh, I saw that the lights were out in here, so I, I assumed the bar was empty. But like most victims of poison, uh, Mr. Ragley died alone. Uh, I hardly think he would have turned off the light out of a sense of occasion. Uh, pardon? There's no penalty in law, Mr. Wills, for murdering a dead man, as far as I know. I suggest you make a clean breast of it to the inspector. Yes, but I did nothing. Nothing I... very terrible, I grant you. you. You found a corpse and you stuck a knife into it. You lost your head. Bring us with you, please, the commercial. Oh, bring us oh, High time, too. Yes, Still your glass. Oh, oh, look at that <laughs> pretty knife there. Hey, that man! What man? Come on, be a minute. I'll see you there. No, me? It's your name, Vance. Yes, what about it? I've got something to say to you. No, I don't think so. Look, you better listen. I say it better. Well, now that your friend has called everyone a skunk, peace seems to have been restored. Yes, indeed. Oh, such excitement. I don't know. Yeah. What's the matter? That's strange. What is? That's whiskey. Well, what would you expect? Uh, landlord, excuse Sorry. me. When that rather flamboyant gentleman bought you a drink just now, what did you have? A gin, sir. Yes, I thought so. Thank you. Oh, haven't we met before, Summer? 
I don't believe so. I seem to know your family. Well, you don't come back to me sometime. Wills, same again, please. Yes, And for my friends. Oh, no, no, really, sir. I think perhaps dinner. Oh, yes. Well, please yourself. Well, excuse us for dinner. Found him? Well, I'd arranged with the local priest to say early mass in his church, and I came down here to look for my hat. You remember I threw it at our Indian friend? Well, you said it would be easy to commit murder here. Yes. I also said I wasn't thinking about the daggers. Well, someone stabbed him. Oh, yes. You know, the one murderer who does not mind being found out or not, is the religious fanatic. It was the Indian, of course. He probably thinks that if he is hanged, he'll go straight to paradise for defending the honor of his prophet. Yes, there is that. It would be reasonable to suppose that our Muslim friend had stabbed him, but... Nonsense in all my life! Sir, you're a fool! My friends, let us not condemn that misguided man. He has been led grievously into the ways of the sinner. Brother, let us pray that he shall one day be led into the meadows of salvation and not the hot fields of the damned. Let us pray for a moment in silence. Good day to you, sir. Damn vandals. I beg your pardon? Look at that. Look down there. There's no stream anymore. It's a rubbish tip. Tin cans, bottles, bits of an old perambulator. My God, there's even a dead cat. Yes, but uh, the cat could have fallen in. I've written to the county council. Newspapers. They even had my own pamphlets printed. No damn use. The whole country's turning into a slum. And nobody lifts a finger. Who are you? One of those total abstainers. No, I'm a Roman Catholic. Oh, yes. Can't say I've got very much time for papers either. Always on their knees praying for the conversion of England, you can find it cheap. Fond of a drink, though, I've heard it some. Have I seen you before? I doubt it. I'm staying down here for the weekend with a friend. At the hotel? Yes. I'll tell you a thing or two about that place. My name's Agni. Come along. I'll show you around the village. Oh. I used to be very proud of it once. Now, everywhere you look, there's thievery, venality, and couldn't care less. Never mind. Shut one eye and you won't notice. Is your friend uh, with you? No, he stayed behind at the hotel. He's reading. You have a room for me, I think. Name, sir? Jeffreys. Oh, Jeffreys. Yes, I have a nice front double for you and madam. Will you please to sign? We should like some tea immediately. Oh, I'm afraid just at the moment, sir, the tea room is being redecorated. But if you would care to have it in your room. We would prefer it there. Splendid. Number 35. My dear. 
me that once we got our hands on the man you call the quick one, it's we'd have a... Oh, what? It's Redding on the telephone for you. Redding? You seem thoughtful. Yes. I have just remembered something. Mm -hmm. That man, the one I've been following. Last night, Radley thought he recognized him. In fact, he said, it will come to me. Well, <laughs> he probably saw his picture in the newspapers. But don't you see, the man is an important government official. Well, and yet, he stays here under an assumed name with a woman who is not his wife. Now, if he were recognized, there would be a great scandal. But Radley does recognize him, or thinks he does. Can you think of a better oh, motive? You, for... sir! You seem to have an obsessive interest in my wife and me. Ever since we arrived in this miserable hotel, you've been staring us out of countenance and dogging our footsteps. Now, I don't know what newspaper you represent, and I care less. But my wife finds your manner offensive, and so do I. I have no statement for you now or hereafter. My dear. Pabli! What impudence! Does he take me for a fool? No. A journalist. Well, he is mad. Oh, embarrassed, perhaps. Flambeau, I'm surprised at you. You, a Frenchman, above all people, don't recognize a honeymoon couple when you see them? A what? Oh, come on. Last night, that man complained loudly and angrily about the service. Now, when people go to an hotel for an immoral weekend, they don't usually draw attention to themselves. Also, he and his lady wife were both wearing brand new wedding rings. But his wife engaged oh, me. You shouldn't take everybody at their word, Flambeau. A man in the public eye. He marries a young lady much younger than he is. Well, it, if he's at all sensitive to ridicule, it's not the sort of thing you shout from the rooftops. Far better a quiet wedding, a honeymoon incognito at an unlikely hotel. Hmm? But I was engaged by his... His ex-mistress? Or perhaps his lady friend? <laughs> Whoever it was, she seems to have suspected what he was up to. Uh, probably too proud to come down and see for herself. Well, mm. I am Arthur Brown. Yes. We've got him. Huh? I don't know how you do it. You knew he was a murderer before anyone else knew he was a man. He was, oh, he was nobody. He was nothing. Just no. a fine shade of doubt based on a whiskey glass. Oh, no. We've got him and he's on his way here now. Mm. Put up a desperate fight. Roughed up two constables. Oh, yes, no. a killer. There's no doubt of it. Oh, I've done it again. Yes, you certainly have. Oh, <laughs> it's thanks to you that we find... Inspector, you don't understand. I'm always doing it, and I don't know why. I do try to, to, to say what I mean, but everybody else means such a lot by what I say. Well, what's wrong? We have our man. Oh, our witness. Somebody knew that poor old Ragley drank cherry bones. Oh, At least cherry brandy does taste of cherries. Well, allow no, me, I Mr. Don't. Ragley, please. I'd, I'd be obliged. You know, beer doesn't taste of hops anymore, or cider of apples. Thank you. You know, I know a thing or two. And I mean to stop our people being poisoned by bad drink. Yes, it's the same every night, sir. Every night. I'm delighted to see one Christian in this room. You speak the truth. The drink is poison. The first man in history to speak out against it was the illustrious Mohammed. It is laid down in his teaching. God damn your soul! Eh? Oh, dear. I was talking about bad drink. Now you chime in and say that Englishmen shouldn't drink beer because wine was disallowed in the desert by that dirty old humbug Mohammed. Oh my God! Oh, dog! You insulting dog! Here, here, here! Yeah. Gentlemen, look, uh, sir, please, I must ask oh, you and your friend to. Well, I'll be damned! God bless you, Ryson. You're the first man I've met in 20 years. Yes, I do hope there'll be no need to take the matter further, Mr. Ragley. Take it further? I'd buy him a drink if you were allowed one. I had no business to insult his religion. And I wish to God you skunks would have the courage to try and kill a man. Not for insulting your religion, you haven't any. But for insulting anything, even your drink. Your good health, sir. Well, fun's over. Who's round, is it? Yeah, Leeds. Um, Mr. Wills, yes. uh, the commercial room is cleared. Oh, thank you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, if you take your drinks with you, please, the commercial room is cleared. High time, too. It's still your glass. Donald! Hey, yeah. yeah. that man! What man? Oh, one be a minute. How's it you there? No me. It's your name, Vance. Yes, what about him? I've got something to say to you. No, I don't think so. Look, you better listen. 
I say it better. Well, now that your friend has called everyone a skunk, peace seems to have been restored. Yes, indeed. Oh, such excitement. I think. Yeah. What's the matter? That's strange. What is? That's whiskey. Well, what would you expect? Uh, landlord, excuse Sorry. me. When that rather flamboyant gentleman bought you a drink just now, what did you have? A gin, sir. Yes, I thought so. Thank you. Yes. Oh, haven't we met before, Summer? I don't believe so. I should have known your friend. Well, you don't come back to me sometime. Wills, same again, please. Yes, And for my friends. Oh, no, no, really, sir. I think perhaps dinner. Oh, yes. Well, please yourself. Well, excuse us for dinner. <laughs> 